Hello. I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to speak here today. Um, my name is Elena Hellman, and um, I'm a graduate student in the Harvard-MIT Health Sciences and Technology program, and I work um, under Matthew Meyerson in his lab at the Broad Institute. Today I'm going to discuss RetroSeq, which is a tool to discover somatic insertion of retrotransposons. So we often hear about transposons being used as an artificial system to induce oncogenesis and reveal important genes. But I'm more interested in retrotransposon activity that occurs naturally in cancer. So what are retrotransposons? Retrotransposons are mobile genomic elements that mobilize via a copy and paste mechanism across the genome. So here we see a retrotransposon um, element in the reference. And that DNA is transcribed into RNA. That, in turn, is reverse transcribed back into DNA. And that DNA is inserted elsewhere in the genome, resulting in now two copies of the original element. Uh, so um, retrotransposons have been described as drivers of genome evolution. They comprise over 40% of the human genome, whereas protein coding genes comprise only 1.5%. These clearly make up a huge portion of the genome. Uh, most are no longer active, luckily for us, but um, some do remain hot, as it's called. So they retain their ability to retrotranspose across the genome. Um, and thus, they've been recently described, and it's coming to light, that it's a major source of uh, genetic variation. Recent Thousand Genomes projects have revealed up to 10,000 polymorphic retrotranspose on insertion sites in the human genome. And it's estimated that um, two European individuals differ by 600 to 1,000 retrotransposon polymorphic sites. So just a brief background on two of the most abundant retrotransposon elements, because we don't really hear about them much in cancer research. Um, they are line 1, L1, and ALU. So line 1s are 6,000 KB long. Um, there's, they compose 17% of the genome, and about 100 of them are still highly active. They're autonomous. Uh, that is, they have two open reading frames, uh, which encode for the reverse transcriptase and endonuclease that's needed to reverse transcribe and insert into the genome. And the ALU element is 300 base pair long. It composes 11% of the genome, and it relies on the L1 retrotransposition machinery. So when a retrotransposon inserts itself into the genome, it can have multiple effects depending on where it lands. Um, it can disrupt the function of the protein if it lands in an exon. Um, it can affect a promoter and thus alter gene expression. It can create or disrupt sites for DNA RNA splicing. And um, due to homologous recombination, even if it lands in an intergenic region, it can lead to further genomic rearrangement. And so thus, not surprisingly, um, retrotransposons have been implicated in cancer. Uh, there's episodic evidence of an L1 inserting into an APC exon early in colorectal cancer progression. There's also evidence for an L1 in a MYC intron affecting splicing in breast cancer. And more recently, a study from the Divine Lab um, found nine somatic L1 insertions in six out of 20 primary lung tumors that they looked at using an experimental assay. So the overall goal of my project is to identify the extent of somatic retrotransposon insertions throughout the cancer genome using paired end sequencing data. And of course, TCGA is a great resource when looking at questions of extent. So um, to that end, I developed RetroSeq. The way in which RetroSeq works is as follows. Um, we align paired end reads to retrotransposon consensus sequence. Uh, that we then locate the pair mates of these uh, reads uh, that align uniquely to the human genome, to the reference genome. We find these reads, we cluster them, and this provides evidence for potential retrotransposon at that site. Now, if these uh, pair mates that we identify, if they're at a normal distance from each other, then this uh, provides evidence for a reference retrotransposon at that site. If, however, the distance between these um, aligned reads where one is in the retrotransposon, the other is unique, uniquely mapped, is non-concordant with the fragment length distribution, then this provides evidence for a putative novel non-reference retrotransposon insertion at that site as such. And that's what we're looking for. And in particular, we're looking for ones that are present in the tumor genome and not in the normal. Um, of course, there are many more steps to RetroSeq and parameters and nuances that um, I won't go into. 
um, for the sake of time. But I guess my poster is still hanging up there, so feel free to ask me about uh, the various steps at any time. I would like to mention, though, that RetroSeq does go back to the reads that align to the retrotransposon consensus sequence. We reassemble them de novo to really try to get at what particular retrotransposon element it was that inserted at this location. So here's an example output or result from a RetroSeq run. Um, this is an IGV view. At the top, you see a normal, the normal genome, and all the reads are normally aligned. There are no problem. Um, on the bottom is the tumor genome, and here you see clusters of uh, re colored reads. And these colored reads represent reads whose pair mates align to a retrotransposon somewhere else in the genome. So this um, shows evidence for a retrotransposon insertion at that blue line. And interestingly enough, this example um, is from the CSMD3 gene, which has been discussed um, at length during this conference for being frequently mutated. So I guess it's mutated in this way as well. Um, so to test the performance of RetroSeq, we uh, did a simulation. We took a BAM file and artificially inserted 226 L1s and 732 ALUs into the BAM file. And then we ran RetroSeq to see if we could reca recapitulate them. And we were pretty well. The sensitivity is pretty high and the specificity as well. So that was a good validation uh, for our approach. As an initial study on real data, which is a bit noisier than our simulation, we um, looked at colorectal cancer, in part because of that um, event I mentioned in the APC gene. So we took nine whole genome sequences from tumor normal pairs and we used a retrotransposon consensus sequence of the L1 family in this particular case. And here you see the results. So the pink lines represent the number of germline somatic insertions of L1s, and the green are the, uh, okay, germline retrotransposon insertions, and the green lines are um, somatic retrotransposon insertions. So you see that there's a wide range of somatic insertions that we see in colorectal cancer. Um, in terms of the composition of these events, for the germline events, um, if you can see on the left panel, we have um, more than half of them are actually known polymorphic events. So they've been already annotated in uh, the Thousand Genomes projects and other recent studies. But we do identify um, a number around 500 novel germline rare mutations or retrotransposon insertions. And on the right, we see the somatic events, the breakdown. Uh, most of them do land in intergenic regions, but some do land in the gene introns and a few even in exons. So for future studies, we're currently um, validating these events experimentally. So this is just um, the first round of some gels where you see the germline um, event happening in both the tumor and the normal, and then the somatic um, this, it's missing the event in the tumor, in the normal. We're going to extend this to other tumor types. For sure, we've already started on lung squamous, and the results are consistent with uh, the Divine Lab. Um, and we're going to integrate other sorts of data, such as expression and methylation, which are known to play a role in this. So in conclusion, RetroSeq um, leverages paradigm sequencing data to computationally localize somatic retrotransposon insertions. Using it, we discovered novel retrotransposon insertions that are present in the tumor, but not in the normal. And some of these insertion land in genes and regulatory regions. And this provides some evidence for the reactivation of retrotransposon mobilization in cancer. So with that, I'd like to thank um, my colleagues, especially Mike Lawrence and Chip Stewart, Gaddy Getz, and my advisor, Matthew Meyerson, and uh, everybody at the Broad Institute Cancer Genome Analysis Program. And with that, I'd thank you for your attention, and I'll take any questions. Questions for Angela. Hi, very good call. Uh, my question is how to, de how to distinguish the transposon with the repeats in the original sequence. Sorry, can you say that again? Uh, the transposon may be a repeat of the original sequence. Yes, they are, right? They're how to de distinguish? Well, so that's, how, that's why we use this method, so that we localize it uh, we localize a novel insertion in a new place. So we take advantage of the paired end that's uniquely mapped to the genome. 
Uh -huh. And that's how we identify the novel insertion. Uh, it also, maybe the original repairs, right? No, because then the distance between the read pairs would be normal and concordant. Okay, thank yeah. you. Okay. Uh, I had a question. Okay. Uh, is there any association between these insertions and uh, earlier late replicating DNA? Well, I mean, the CSMD3 has insertions. Yeah, we haven't looked at that yet, but that would definitely be. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I find myself worried about early and late replicating DNA now for some reason. <laughs> okay, anything? There's one. Oh. I was just wondering whether you just throw away uh, non uniquely mapped reads. I mean, the many retro portions are highly repetitive. Yeah, so if both, pair, uh, both ends align to uh, the repeat, we, we don't look at that because okay, we don't so know what to do. You only that. consider uniquely mapped reads? We only consider uh, paired reads where one read is unique and the other is not. All right, mm -hmm. thanks. Okay, uh, we should move on. Thank you, Elena. Thank you.